What's going on, everybody? It's Coach Jan here from Justice for Hire, uh, which is his Justice for Hire's uh, Tai Chi to the People. Welcome. And for all of you who are, uh, Mark, what's going on? <laughs> for all of you who watch on YouTube, I just want to say this, that you are welcome to join this, um, this session. We do this every week, and uh, I'm, I, I love having new folks come on. And uh, it, whether you're experienced in Tai Chi or not, uh, if you're if you're watching and you're not experienced in Tai Chi and you're coming from the Justice for Hire community, uh, and for those of you who are in the Tai Chi community who don't know what Justice for Hire is, it's a show that we're producing uh, with a community. We're using our app, justiceforhire.app, to produce this show uh, with a cast worldwide, and it's an action series, and it's real fun stuff. So uh, everybody's welcome to join the cast going to justiceforhire.app, and we do these trainings every week. Uh, dedicated to a different noble cause. So this is the, the last day we're doing Meals for Unity and anybody who uh, appreciates the training and wants to donate can donate directly to Meals for Unity on Instagram at Meals for Unity or go right to Meals for Unity, uh, their website. So uh, that said, we do this every week. So the training's always uh, open, free, no, no uh, uh, need to donate, no pressure to donate. But if you want to, uh, it's always for a good cause and it's always directly to the cause. Um, tai Chi, my favorite thing to share. I'm a former captain and coach of the U.S. Tai Chi push hands team. Uh, I was coached by world champion Josh Waitzkin, and uh, the, the entire team is a, was a stellar team when I took over. There's still a, a number of wonderful players, uh, and new and old, and uh, I love sharing the stuff that builds the strength in Tai Chi, uh, that builds strength really just for life and for, you know, the Negong it's called as one third of the Tai Chi system. And today we're going to continue our uh, dissection of the 12 yin set of Negong from the Wu style of Tai Chi. Today we'll be doing an exercise called leading the sheep along. Probably one of my favorite exercises because of how simple it is um, and how effective as a counter wrestling move uh, it is. So uh, that said, uh, we will start now. And this is a series of videos. If you have not, uh, if you missed a move, uh, there are, uh, at the time of this recording, I skipped moves one, two, three, and four because we do them so much on these, these training sessions. I will go back to that and in the coming weeks when we get up to 12. When we get up to 12, I'll revert back to one, two, three, and four so that you can have the entire collection of dissected um, uh, exercises. So. Um, that being said, right now we're on number nine at the time of this recording. That is, uh, it starts at like five. So um, number nine, we're going to go right, uh, we're going to do our little warm up and we're going to go right into it. So if you have any questions, always feel free to ask. And uh, I'm going to just set this the screen up so that you guys can see, uh, see me full screen. And here we go. Now that is done. And a uh, little, little. <laughs> look wise a lot of stuff going on today we were, we're launching a campaign really really cool stuff and if you don't know what that is yet go to justiceforhire.com and you'll see or even dot app and you'll see uh what i'm what, what we're launching uh in the midst of launching right now hence the hair all well, nuts so palms facing down feet shoulder length apart and parallel which mine are not so i can fix that imaginary string lifts you from the top of the head once you feel that lift that lift might pull your chest up. That totally might happen. And that's okay if it does. It's okay if it pulls your chest up as long as you allow the chest to drop back down. That means you get that imaginary string lifting you up. It might pull the collarbone a bit. It might pull the chest. Come release the collarbone. Grandmaster William C.C. Chen calls it a 5% compression, quote unquote. Um, but this is every Tai Chi teacher I've ever encountered is adamant about the softening of the chest and recognize that when you soften the chest, you soften the muscles in the back as well. In other words, if you stick the chest out, you're also flexing your upper back. And the whole point of Tai Chi is to be able to uh, hold a posture with minimal tension and maximum um, and optimized uh, performance. So you want to optimize your, your, your uh, energy usage here. So you want to minimize the tension and only use the tension necessary to hold a posture. Imaginary strength, chest relax, and you want to give yourself a sensation of relaxation cascading down the spine, all the way down to the tailbone, pull straight down. The hips 
how much you feel like there's a weight on it. Mental weight. Ooh, pull you straight down. In other words, if your butt is sticking out, if your lower back is flexed, uh, drop. You want to minimize the curve in the spine as well. Softening the knees. And notice what happens to the hips. Your hips shift into a position with the dropping the tailbone. And your hips should feel like a bowl of water that you don't want to spill. Tip it over in any direction you're going to spill. It. So you want to get that sensation. All these little ideas, these concepts, you hold these concepts the entire time, but they're also malleable, these concepts. Because obviously, if we're doing an exercise where boom, we're turning the hip over here, the hips are swiveling, they're turning at an angle. So that concept of water then essentially uh, uh, would fall apart because you have, you're have you spilling water everywhere. But uh, think about this, these concepts and ideas to help you get alignment and sensation. Because once I feel that connectivity, that sensation of the bowl in my hips, I maintain that sensation of the alignment. Not necessarily the concept of the water, but the alignment. The concept of the water will help you when you're standing up straight here and you just want to find the alignment. But once you find that alignment, you maintain it, even when you're doing a crank. A crank, meaning if I'm grappling, if I'm throwing someone to the ground, if I'm going to drop my chest on them and sprawl my legs out so I can take their back, etc. Uh, or maybe I'm just going to slam them right down. But the whole concept is that my, my spine, everything stays aligned so that I can put the pressure intentionally wherever I want it to go. So and this is supposed to be about exercise number nine. We just went really deep into, <laughs> into this, this uh, bowl concept. Okay, now the breathing. Mouth closed, tongue on the ceiling of the mouth. Inhaling into the lower dantian. About three finger lengths below, below the belly button. One, two, three, or two inches. Inhaling into the belly. See, feel, experience the color gather in the belly. Exhale. Wash that color down the arms, the palm, and the fingertips. Inhaling into the belly. Exhale, washing down the arms, the palms, and the fingertips. So you want to give the sensation of breathing a color. This is massively important for literally all the exercises we're going to do. This color visualization, giving the sensation of breathing a color, allows you to give the breath a vehicle, the attention a vehicle, and you're utilizing the breath to catalyze this motion. Inhale into the belly, exhale, wash it down the arms and the palms and the fingertips. About an inch or two beyond. That means that you're using your attention, moving your attention about an inch or two beyond. Of course, wherever the attention goes, the mind goes, <clears throat> the circulation intensifies, etc. So you want to push yourself, push your visualization capabilities to go beyond your body. There's a lot there, there's a lot to unpack there, but just practice it and ask questions later <laughs> if you're not used to these concepts or if you are turned off by the concept of chi which is totally understandable because there's a bunch of people that are full of bs out there talking about chi powers and all this other stuff and then they can't stand up to real pressure and practical application and they're walking from across so uh, that being said uh, do not discount the power of visual visualization which and utilizing your breath and circulation uh, to help you catalyze your visualization because that's what the best in the world do. The top CEOs, the top athletes all visualize. It's a very, very important component of performance. So this is a way for you to train visualization in your body. So if you're concerned about chi, et cetera, uh, which I, we, we, I do talk about on this channel, but I, I talk more about the sport. Um, chi is a very loaded weighted concept. Uh, and it's very much misunderstood and misused in, in the States. And we're looking to try to change that. But the only way we're going to change it is by being really practical and really, really precise uh, and really strategic with the way we use Tai Chi as a martial art, as a sport to actually win. So <laughs> let's do some Ning Ong with that kind of stuff in mind. Inhaling into the belly, exhaling down, inhale up. Exhaling down. This is called uplifting heaven. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. 
We're gonna exhale, wash that color out through the fingertips. Inhale, suck it back in through the arms like a vacuum cleaner. Exhaling down. Inhale, keep the attention in the belly. Exhaling, pushing from the belly out through the legs. Inhaling up, even deeper. This is breathing formula two. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. All this will come back into play when we do this exercise number nine of the neck on in a moment. Inhaling up, exhale out. Pushing the color out from the belly. Inhale, drawing it back in through the fingertips like vacuums, sucking up the color visualization as you inhale. Exhaling, or actually inhaling even deeper. Inhale even deeper. That was supposed to be a three-stage inhalation. Now we're gonna do a four-stage. Inhaling up, even deeper, even deeper, even deeper. Exhaling down and widen our stance. Shoulder length and a half apart. Oh. Seated. This seated position is called a half horse stance because if it was a full horse stance, you'd be going all the way down. Boom, holding your thighs parallel to the ground. So this is a half horse stance. And you're going to drop the tailbone down again. So when you get to this horse stance, you might find a little tension is created in your lower back. Just drop that out. It's not a tuck. It's just a drop instead of a flex factor. Just drop. And if you want to create a meme of that or throw some music behind it, feel free. You're going to inhale, pull the wrists onto the hips, exhaling, pelvis rotates on the femur. Inhale, breath pulls you to the side and up. Exhale down. Three more. Breath lifts you up. Exhaling. Two more. One more. The breath should feel like a rope as you're climbing and then releasing to go down. And reverse it. It helps to redistribute heat trapped in the chest cavity. Exhaling down. Inhale, breath lifts the wrist. Exhale, wash the palms and fingertips. Inhale, draw in. And we're gonna go right to number nine. So I'm gonna lift this camera up just a little bit. We're gonna go right to number nine. Inhaling up. Exhale, push the color to the palm and fingertips. And we're going to start from exercise two, which I have another video on yet, but embracing the one. So this position where the hands in Wu style, note that the middle finger is a quote unquote straight line from middle finger to the elbow. So not straight as in I'm locking my fingertips, but straight intentionally. So your the intention of straightness from middle finger to elbow. You can imagine a straight line there. You don't have to lock the arms in a rigid fashion. That'll throttle the circulation. Middle finger as high as the elbows, or as high as the shoulders. Elbows down and gravity is pulling them down. The important reason to start in this position is because this embracing the one position, which is very much uh, holds some of the key components of the Wu style, which is using the arms like blades. The Wu style uses the arms like blades and is very much into combinations, grappling combinations, pressure combinations, uh, and rapid fire combinations. The only other form I've seen to, to truly do rapid fire combinations uh, in such small circles has been Grandmaster William C.C. Chen's reverse breathing yang form. Boy, boom. All these little combinations, each one of these moves having a different uh, many different applications. So here you get to this, this standard Wu style fighting position. So the elbows are always in, very, very small. And you're going to guide pressure, leading the sheep, sheep along is the name of this exercise. You're going to drop one hand 
to the level of your solar plexus. The other one will remain on the, on the shoulder height. And what you'll do is then you're gonna to turn toward the lower hand, but the eye will be on the middle finger of the upper hand. And notice that the hands don't move at all. They change level, but they don't move left and right. And you turn all the way to the hip. So another imaginary line that you can hold here is the concept of a line going through the hips, straight through the hips. And this is a line that you want to, another line that you want to imagine and maintain in your form uh, because geometry has a huge part, uh, huge, is a huge component of all the martial arts, but uh, I find it especially helpful in Tai Chi so, or any of the internal arts. So you have this imaginary line coming out here and you touch that line with this, the bottom hand. Hands float down a level, meaning that the shoulder hand came down to solar plexus, the solar plexus hand came down to hip level. Once that happens and you're using the waist, you're not really using your hips much. You wanna isolate the waist in the beginning and then we'll add the hip layer. Inhaling, hip hand to shoulder level. Exhaling, eye has shifted to the top hand, stays on the middle finger, and each hand goes down a level. So you touch the hip line. Inhaling up, stand up. It's as if the wrist is being lifted by the breath, and exhale, energize the fingertips. Inhale. When I inhale, look at the detail here. The hand is soft, but it's not dead weight. It's not limp. It's soft. It's essentially slightly de-energized. Now, there are variations where you can energize the fingertip and then do the reverse and then de-energize as you, as you go down. We're going to, and when I say energize, that means filling the fingers and softening. Filling the fingers and softening. So in this first version, and there's many variations of this, and I'll teach about five here, lifting the wrists. The breath lifts the wrist rather than the fingertips. Why is this important? The reason this is important is because you want to start getting the sensation, one of the first concepts of visual infrastructure and breath work in Wu style is the concept of the marionette. So the breath pulls you like a marionette, lifts the wrist, and lifts the hands. And you're, it's as if the belly is controlling the pulley system that controls the wrists versus the fingertips. The fingertips are components that you add at different times in this style of breathing. There's other styles of breathing. Again, William C.C. Chen's reverse breathing doesn't have any of the wrists for it. It has everything from the fingertip. So th that's awesome, it's fantastic. And there, there's different times you use these different techniques. Here we're gonna lift the wrists and then exhale, pushing the color from the belly through the palms and the fingertips with the emphasis on the top hand, which would be considered the yang hand. Inhaling up, exhaling. Inhaling up, standing up, exhaling, sinking back down to your half four stance. Leading the sheep along is a counter wrestling move. There are of course many applications to this. So when I say these things, and if you're an experienced Tai Chi practitioner, Know that I, I say these things with the, the understanding that all of these moves have essentially infinite applications. But the very practical application that I like to focus on is essentially someone shooting to a leg. You get your hand on the back of the neck, you get your hand on the shoulder, and you move them out of the way. You essentially slide and take them out of the way. And if they're going for the leg, you might retract the leg and turn them to get them to slide off of you which is great. Of course, if you get very experienced wrestlers um, and they get a grip of you, that is a challenge that you need to deal with. <laughs> and I recommend practicing sprawling, et cetera, uh, and a bunch of, of counter wrestling drills and also actual wrestling to help you in those scenarios. So when I say that this is a helpful in counter wrestling, it is, um, but uh, you know, that does not discount, you're not gonna do this move and then become a great counter wrestler. Um, this is a, these Negong exercises help to build internal strength, both the intercostal muscles, 
or the circulation, the breathwork, the visualization, you will feel different when you do this 12 yin set. If you do it regularly, if you do it often, you will find that you have a shift in your life. Yeah, I guarantee it. You just need to do, put the, the time in. Um, I feel like I'm recharged like a battery, like no other exercise does for me. Yoga cha charges me in a different way. I did yoga this morning and I felt great, uh, but it's not Ning Gong. The Ning Gong is not Tai Chi. Tai Chi is fantastic, but the Tai Chi form you're doing, which can be you know, uh, very energizing, et cetera, of course it can be, it is not the repeated, specifically the repetition of Ning Gong. It is the repetition of one move over and over again with that visualization that will allow you to feel all of this, this circulation in a heightened way and the emphasis on the different muscle groups. That's why I liken Nagong to weightlifting for intention. You will feel stronger mentally, physically, energetically stronger. Inhaling up, exhale, push the breath work through the top hand, either middle finger, top hand goes up, exhale. And I'm only standing in most of these exercises, the previous ones, the standing is just to, is traditionally considered to help pump the chi and to help strengthen the legs of a beginner. Meaning that that framing can make it seem as if uh, a master would not do the standing up and sitting down. I do the standing up and sitting down anytime I start and they go on to warm up. Uh, I find that it helps pump my, my sensation of using the ground and the breath work and the coordination. But once I do it a few times, probably about six times each side, inhaling up, exhaling down, then I'll start to switch. So now I'll stay seated. That's what I mean by switch. And I'll focus just on inhaling up, Exhaling down, hands floating down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Again, arms are not moving left to right. They actually stay. Shoulder, they're in my, they're aligned with the shoulders. So if you, sometimes you talk about the body in, in, in uh, quadrants, cutting across down the center, left quadrant, right quadrant. Sometimes you talk about it as a center line and shoulder, left shoulder alignment, right shoulder alignment. So the hands will stay at either shoulder alignment the entire time. They'll just drop and level. Now, one of the things that's really interesting here is that when you start to, and we've been talking about this for the last few weeks, the concept of being able to take the sensation of the drop, meaning this big drop, where if a, an opponent's pressing on you, you're sinking, you're, you're sinking and sitting, dropping your weight, downward, but not just downward. The arms are extended, the elbows are down, which means that the weight from the muscles is, can be transferred to whomever you're touching much more readily. For example, my straight arm here, I put my arm on top of it. If I go dead weight with my arm, it's heavier, of course. But what happens when you go dead weight? Well, you drop the elbow. If I would put my arm on here and I kept my elbow up or my tricep inflated, I would not have the same type of heaviness as this, that simple, simple weight distribution. So now you add the concept of attention and intention. Intention is the quality of your attention, it is the quality of the thing that you want to do, how strong in terms of quality it is that, that which you want to do by uh, doing a thing. So I'm placing my arm on here and my intention is to transfer my weight into my opponent's arm, not suddenly, but gradually. So when you keep the elbows down here, you are gradually dropping the weight into their arms or onto their body. And you feel it in your arms and the intention as you exhale through the arms is so to put that weight into their body. So how do you maintain that without the overt drop? Again, this is the overt drop, but the overt drop can be a distraction from the intention and the smaller circles. Remember, smaller circles create greater centrifugal force. So the smaller circle 
is the thing you want to focus on now to achieve the same thing so, or something similar, if not more, even more powerful. So the smaller circles you're going to emphasize are going to be here in the scapula and in the tailbone. Remember that drop we were talking about. So from the side here, inhaling up, exhaling down. Actually, I'm going to have to turn a little bit to the back here. Notice that my lower hand, which becomes my higher hand, as it goes up, the scapula should disappear. The scapula should disappear right here. You want to intentionally make it disappear because as this disappears and as it drops down, as it comes back to its, its rest and position, you can feel the bone come protruding again. And that's what you want. So that small circle, that rotation in the shoulder helps you to achieve more of that weight on your opponent's arms. Very, very important. Now there's a, a uh, circulation and chi perspective here as well. Uh, the concept of the scapula disappearing into the shoulders, we always talk about this. Uh, it's called opening the valves or some people call it closing the valves, depending on how you perceive valves. But the concept is that the circulation shifts to the palms and fingers faster. And I, I instantly feel that. So I know when I lift my arms up here, it is very different than my arms here. When I push the shoulder blades in, I can feel, and I also have the intention to feel more of the circulation of my hand. My hands get warmer almost instantly. So this requires practice over time, especially with the yin set of Nagong. And now we'll talk a little chi talk for a moment. But the concept is when you're doing the yin set of Nagong, the first place if you have not felt the tingling sensations in your body, um, uh, which a, a beginner might feel over time, um, you would feel them sticking, the chi sticking to the, uh, my, my teacher, uh, uh, Sifu Kiptong, will talk about the chi sticking to the uh, forearms, the soft part inside the forearms first, heating in the palm and in the lower back, you would feel the chi sticking to the lower back, tingling in the lower back. So these are just places to keep your mind if, if you're a beginner or if you, I know tons of Tai Chi practitioners that have never felt Chi before. And it's always shocking to me. It's, a, it's, 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 it's it, I mean, it's just shocking. So <laughs> I'm like, well, why are you doing Tai Chi if you don't feel Chi? Like, so like um, that being said, you know, uh, I, I, I came out of William Chen's, uh, when I trained on William Chen's Chi, uh, U.S. Tai Chi push hands team as an outsider from the from the Wu style. Um, my father and I were invited into the team without being William Chen students. We later became students. Um, we were really surprised at how differently the circulation felt in his form than versus any other form we have done. So the two extremes of of circulation sensations that we felt have been the Wu style primarily because of the Nagong and then William, uh, William Chen's uh, reverse breathing form. And I'd say that his reverse breathing form feels way more um, auric, meaning that like, it's, it's as if the vibration is coming off your whole body versus, um, and sometimes flooding into the triceps, et cetera, down because you're doing a lot of bouncing, but the circulation feels more auric um, and, and faster in that sense versus the uh, Wu style, which is really, like a spear pushing the breath work and circulation in various areas. Again, here. So that was a tangent, but <laughs> the concept we were talking about was opening the valves to feel the circulation. You want to feel the circulation here intensify for this one moment. Inhaling up, lift the wrists. And just before you turn, as you energize the fingertip, meaning that you push the breath from the belly to through the fingertip. You want to feel the circulation intensify for just that one moment. The circulation continues the entire time, but it is the most intense, pretty much in this six inch range that, that I'm experiencing right here. Mm. And it can, I, I still feel it on my arm, but that first moment of intensity right here. And that's because the shoulder blade is disappearing into the upper back, you're intentionally reaching through the curve. When we talk about reaching through the curve, that means that you're extending as much as you can while maintaining a curve without locking the arms. So you're reaching through the curve here, 
Notice what this does for a long distance fighter. If you are a fighter or if you're a grappler, even if you have shorter arms, this reaching through the curve is going to get you a smidgen more distance, but not just that the distance that you need because you know, a fraction of, a, of, a, of an inch is a big deal in any game. But you're also going to get um, this added power so this power is actually really, really, really important. It's not just the shoulder power, because if I do it this way, meaning the shoulder here, I'm emphasizing the push in my shoulder. Here instead, I'm emphasizing the, the scapula, the push from the scapula. So it's actually coming from the back. And this is, uh, in my experience in, in, in Sancho and in push hands, this is allowing me a lot of strength to pulling from my back going forward in when I don't have the, uh, let's say the largest pectoral muscles. As a matter of fact, I'm missing, I was born without one pectoral muscle. So I have to uh, compensate. And it just so happens that the Wu style does that inherently. So you really wanna take advantage of this moment to feel the circulation and also feel the ability to drop the weight into the arms because of that scapula loading up it's in and now it's going to drop back down. And so you have that momentum, that weight. And you're still using the weight from the, the other drop that's paused here. And of course, because this is Tai Chi, I just use the term pause and some people might consider Tai Chi to be continuous and flowing. And sometimes it is overtly continuous and flowing. And sometimes it is uh, very, very subtle that even a lot of very experienced practitioners, well, I've, I've watched them miss that uh, and not understand that flowing doesn't necessarily mean movement or uh, obvious overt movement. Sometimes it means standing very still and, <laughs> and taking pressure and yielding without shrinking. We'll talk about that concept another time. Inhaling up. So now we're going to make this a little more uh, flowing for, for, and this is great, not just, this is not to appease anyone. <laughs> there are so many variations of this and the flowing ones are really spectacular as well. But note the difference. The difference here is that we are intentionally loading and redirecting, guiding or the sheep along. Remember that's the name of the exercise or leading the sheep along. It's as if you have little sheep, beautiful, wonderful, soft sheep, and you just say, hey, you're a shepherd. And say, hey, let's do my thing. And it's great. So now you, we're going to speed it up. And when I say speed it up, I don't mean go faster in terms of our arm movement, but we're going to make the circle shorter. So therefore, it seems to be faster. But for us, all we've done is made the circle a little bit tighter and therefore increase the power. So instead here, I'm now giving one breath to each side. So my hand that's low, that's still dropping down, inhaling, I'm coming up and I'm arching over and dropping down. And then I'm exhaling. It's as if I'm whipping my arms out across from one side down to the other. Of course, that is obviously horrible punching techniques. You don't take me for, <laughs> that's not the way I strike <laughs> on my better days. But the concept here, whipping along, you're still leading the sheep along and you want to maintain the sensation. Every time you do a variation, you want to still be able to reference the previous iteration in terms of the strength. You want to see how much of that strength, if it's really overt and it's a really big drop, how can you take that and make it smaller and more subtle? You want to ask yourself that every time you shift into a new variation. And again, I'm still using mostly the waist. I haven't added my hips yet. When we talk about adding the hips, which we're gonna do in a moment, that always means, and I always kind of uh, reference this disclaimer, that means that you have to keep the knees still because if you pull the hip and pull the knee, you're uh, can do damage to the kneecap. 
and you obviously don't want to do that. So you want to create this separation. Look at this separation I'm creating right here. My knee to compensate for the hip turning. My hip is turning. My knee is pushing slightly outward and forward to maintain as much of that stability as possible and as much of its position as possible. And I only use a little bit of hip. I don't go too hard with the hip lean. I don't turn my hip as if I'm, I'm pivoting my foot or going for a throw or throwing a punch. I'm not pivoting. I'm using some of the torque from the hip to add to the centrifugal force created by the, catalyzed by the breath, manifested in the torso, meaning the waist, the core, the trunk first, and then cascading to the hip. So it's actually a quick one, two, three, it's, or should I say it is, a, it is a very subtle one, two, three. Breath work catalyzes, trunk moves, hip adds. So, and sometimes you do hip and trunk, but right now we're gonna do trunk and then hip because we've been working on the trunk this entire time. So when you add that hip, The hip is almost an afterthought, and I don't mean an afterthought in the in the in the sense of the word that to undermine it in any way. I mean an afterthought in the sense that you're, it's actually giving you is the last thought in the power chain here. So I'm using my hips. Notice that, notice how my stance is still hardly moving. And I'm making slight adjustments on my feet, just so you guys know, I just you can see that I just made a little adjustment. I'm making slight adjustments on my feet because um, too much pressure for too long on any part of the foot, in my experience, um, doesn't necessarily feel great. So I wanna make sure that I can make the subtle slight adjustments in my feet so that I can hold the stance and maintain uh, the, all the work I'm doing in my legs uh, while also uh, feeling great. <laughs> uh, so make slight adjustments. And not every, every time I turn, but uh, every several reps, I might make a little slight adjustment. Just another one, very subtle. Just another one, just to fix that. And just bring, bring it back to flowing. See how much you can do with the hip added. Now we're going to go into into a chop almost. So this concept is really cutting the angle even sharper. We're doing this flowing version. We want to feel great. We want to feel the circulation. We want to feel the weight of the arms dropping down. But we want to feel the ease of the waist and the hips. We want to feel the ease of these things moving. And these are great exercises to really get into a zone on. Again, I'm giving one breath to one side and one breath to another. As I inhale to one side, I do emphasize the color pulling into one arm. As I exhale on the other side, I do emphasize the color pushing out of one arm. That's not to say that you can't do something different. That's just me uh, aligning myself to the tradition of the Wu style breathwork visualization that I was taught. And I do make adjustments on these as I, as I uh, progress, uh, especially as I train the freestyle uh, fighting and movement. Make lots of adjustments on these, but the baseline, the foundation is always important. So now we're gonna cut the hip cut the angle sharper. And you're going to, as almost as if you're going to start rolling the hips a little bit like this. But before we go there, just look at the manifestation of the arms. 
you want the angle to be sharp, really sharp, very, very sharp angle. So, and you want that sharp angle to have the torque of the hips and the waist uh, at the same time and the hands, everything going at the same time. So of course I did that fast. And when I, with doing that fast, I also tensed my muscles in my arm a bit to boom, get that, that quick chop uh, and downward energy. And sometimes you do that. Sometimes someone's um, shooting at you and instead of a, 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 a dead weight or a near uh, uh, collapse kind of drop, which is very heavy, sometimes you might strike and actually drop onto them too. So that, that might happen. Um, the strikes can be more, uh, give you more of a pop uh, rather than the blunt weighted feeling of these boom, that kind of just drop, uh, relaxed drop. So the relaxed drops, oftentimes, even if you shoot the intention through the, the limbs, which you should do all the time, um, oftentimes feel uh, like blunt heaviness versus the chopping down, which might feel uh, um, a, a bit more focused and explosive. Um, that being said, both are, are great. Um, so here, Inhaling up and exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down, chopping. Inhaling up, exhaling down, right across. Inhaling up. So we're making the circle smaller. And I was saying before, you're going to get that, that chopping effect as if you're growing the hips. But just wait a moment on that and look for the angle, the sharper angle. Notice that I'm on Zoom and I am uh, really focusing on cutting across my, my hips to my, my, uh, my shoulder to my hip. So that shoulder to hip angle is really, really important. The shoulder to hip angle. So it's more pronounced here. Before we were going, you know, you can see how if you look at the hands as painting an X, it's a much wider, longer axe. So now we're making a super sharp inhaling up. Same concept of, and I've noticed I'm standing again. So we're standing up as it, on the inhalation and chopping across, inhaling up, chopping across. Remember that line that we talked about, the imaginary line coming out of the hips. On this version, you're gonna cut the hand just behind the line. So for some of you, that might mean that you're flexible enough in the waist to actually turn and get that without pulling the shoulder back uh, or dropping the arm, pulling it back at all. So I definitely caution, caution against putting the shoulder back. If, you, if you're still working on your flexibility in the waist, which is totally fine because this takes time uh, and it's valuable enough to keep working at, uh, I recommend just going as far as you can without pulling the shoulder back. So just relax the arm. Notice that I have that gentle, natural curve on the bottom of the arm. And I just turn as much as I, I can. So here, boom, I'm just behind my hip line. So when you're doing this, inhaling up, cut across the body. And notice that the application starts to, um, starts to shift. And, or should I say that even more, uh, that there are, are even uh, are different opportunities here that the arm, this look of the arm is very similar. Uh, the position of the hands is very, very similar to a position on arms. So while here you might be on a back and the neck or a shoulder and a neck, etc., cetera, um, here, the hands are closer together and you might be on a single arm. You may have a double, double arm control on one single arm for your opponent. So you might have something where you're snatching the opponent down and pulling them in. You might be pulling them back. You might be standing up and pulling them through. Um, all of these things are, are, are viable options. And this, this one little technique helps you just get into this very flowing, uh, flowing mentality while in double arm control. And that is one way to look at it. But of course, you want to focus, you don't want to think too much about fighting while doing any of these exercises. I often tell folks that are, are training and push hands with me, 
especially people who are not Tai Chi players, um, who are, are fighters who are very focused on the fight, to remove the fight from the movement. Because the fight is something you add to it later. Uh, and it's, and it's, a, it's really a mentality. You want to you wanna be, you know, you want to put yourself on a genius level of, of, as a strategist uh, and put your sensitivity level as high as possible. And all of those things come before the concept of fight. So, uh, and, I, and I love the fight mentality. I think it's very, very important. And I think that all of these things are um, components that help to optimize the fight mentality or can optimize the fight mentality and other high performance mentality. But you have to take the time to give yourself space to perceive more. So inhale up, chop that, so that X right across, inhaling up, chop the X right across and start to use the hip here. Really feel that waist in the hip. Remember to compensate with the knee as you turn the hip. Meaning, oh, open the knee this way and the hip goes that way. The other side, knee goes this way, hip goes, my corresponding hip goes this way. Boom. Now let's try it seated. Now I've sped this up in terms of the breathing. Soften a bit, even more. Notice that I'm almost lifting. I'm doing it almost like I'm tossing something. It's not a very good throw, but almost like I'm just tossing it over, gently tossing it over to the hip. Slightly over the shoulder, back down to the hip. And with this more flowing version, I'm also doing the one breath for each side. Like an inhalation for one, exhalation for another. Inhalation for one, I'm still on shoulder height. Boom. And solar plexus height, back down. Shoulder, solar plexus. Shoulder, solar plexus. Notice that the inside hand does a little chop. These little chops are really, really interesting. Um, they're in so many different martial arts and different styles. Um, I've recently learned that Kempo, uh, Chinese American Kempo, uh, Kempo credit, <laughs> they call it an elbow check. Uh, so this little boom, check, you sidestep uh, a, a person's cross, you check the elbow uh, on their shoulder to get them to step into a position that you want. I think it's really, really cool. You can actually check out one of my videos from like three or four days ago. Um, with uh, Sensei Donnie Jeffcoat, uh, who's a, one of the leaders in Amer Chinese American Kempo. Um, but he's showing me that move. It's really, really cool. But this also happens in Luhabapa, six coordinations, eight methods. It's one of the first boom motions that you do. And it happens in Tai Chi as well. And so it happens in lots of different places. Um, so I highly recommend giving yourself that sensation. Oh, here, right here, I just did that drop across. And then my other arm's coming up, and look what's happening right here. Now, I do want to emphasize that the it is not as overt as the motion I was just talking about from the other styles. So, but you do get a similar uh, zigzag, meaning elbow, elbow. So here, one, and look, right here, two. Of course, because the reason you're not getting that sharper elbow is because we are emphasizing the elbows downward. Emphasizing downward, but you still get that little turn. Again, if I take one arm out, one hand goes high and the other one goes low. Take the other arm out. Going high, the middle, boom, and then low. So, still emphasizing elbows downward. Now we're going to do a variation that takes us to maintains uh, some of the concept, but could also be considered its own exercise. 
Uh, but I was taught this exercise as a variation of the Shivana. And the concept is still guiding pressure off the body. And leaving the sheep alone proper, you have the hands, we're gonna come back to leaving the sheep alone proper. You have the hands on the opponent's body. They are likely going for your leg or your torso. That's likely what's happening. So therefore everything is happening in between here, elbows, forearms to palm. All of this surface area is being utilized to guide the opponent here past the body. If they've gotten the leg, there's lots of times where I'm doing, I've done jujitsu. I remember these moments very specifically where uh, someone I'm playing with grabs the leg, they grab the leg, I have to turn them, and then I have to push the hip forward so that I don't get uh, taken down by some of the, uh, by their next, their, their follow up to my uh, leaving the sheep along. So I'm like, okay, huh, I've guided them down, I misdirected them because they were trying to get me here, push me back. I turn them and then boom, I, I stick my hip forward uh, and I might even be pressing my knee on their shoulder, etc., so that I can protect myself and make my next decision. So um, notes there. But here, now we're going, the pressure becomes closer. So we just finished this variation, inhaling up. And now the pressure, one arm's extended, elbow still down. The pressure, this is, it symbolizes an opponent having you putting your hand between your opponent, your opponent's pressure, your opponent will be pressing on your hand here. You're blocking an opponent from getting to your, your shirt or your chest. You put your hand, this happens all the time. You actually drill this in some of the push hands drills, the, 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 uh, especially in the Wu style. Uh, there's moments for this every two pushes where you're really training this sensation. And you might be doing this, moving it off from here, and you're taking a hand and you're moving out. Right now, this one is even more sophisticated because to be able to take someone's pressure in this position, in the Tai Chi push hands um, perspective that I was, you know, I grew up on and, I, and I, I've trained in a lot, um, this is considered safe. So if you're playing from embracing the one, which is embracing the one, our, our, our second leg arm exercise, is essentially you keeping an opponent at, at uh, punching range and mid-range. So you're getting this very uh, safe kind of hands, uh, arm's length distance play. And you're controlling the elbows, you're doing your best to get the person to, to stay away from you. You might be pushing them on certain angles, but you're keeping them away and you're pushing them out of the ring, et cetera. When you start playing 50-50, meaning that's your body to body, then you start having to take pressure on the body. From my Sifu Keith's perspective, pressure on the body uh, is essentially close to loss. And while I don't, I, I, I changed my perspective, uh, shifted my perspective from that original teaching that I had of the, but the concept remains the same that um, this is, this can be red alert. Um, so in other words, if you get someone who's really good at pushing, um, them touching your actual core could be detrimental for you. It could be a big push back for you. Uh, it could be a, 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 a very targeted push on inhalation or exhalation that compresses the chest just enough to, to, um, you know, throw off your attention for a moment. And then they execute another big move. Uh, it can be painful, all that stuff. So I want to emphasize that this moment is, it has been considered a red alert moment. So you're in this red alert moment and you're taking the opponent, I do not consider red alert now though. It's, it's like, but I like to honor uh, the tradition here. So um, this moment does require skill and strength in the intercostal muscles to take the pressure and flexibility in the waist to move it off. This is the variation. Moving off. I give you one breath to one side. You inhale, and when you inhale, you can stand up if you'd like and you switch the hands. You're staying essentially on the same plane along the lines of the heart. And because of the touching on the chest, it also offers you an extra layer of 
of uh, required focus, meaning that you have to work that much harder or more uh, intently on keeping the breath visualization in your belly, in your lower dantian, because you have the, the attention being pulled up here simply by sensation. If, I have, if I'm doing this, my attention is likely up here on where I'm slapping versus down here. So if you even try this exercise and breathe into your belly while slapping on your, on your chest, you'll feel how you have to focus that much more in your belly to keep your mind down there. And this is a big concept because you can essentially see where someone's mind is in terms of their level in their body. When someone's tension rises, the mind rises, some people would call it the chi rises, but I like to, to really focus it more so on, on tension and the mind. Uh, you can see they might be top heavy. So you, you can strategize around that. So meaning that, hey, they're top heavy, so I'm going to manipulate those shoulders to flip them forward and backward over their softer hips, uh, as an example. So here, really work on the breath in the belly Do your best to keep the elbows down, keep the hands soft. Inhaling into one, I'm gonna stay seated to this one. Exhale to the other, I'm gonna add the hip at the end. The flexibility in the waist is very important on this one. The spine feeling aligned like a pillar, meaning that your center line awareness, more specifically, it's like a pillar in your spine. Everything, all the organs are moving around it. So when you take that breath, you're breathing into that center line in the lower down chin, right here. Keeping the eye in the middle finger of the extended hand. One breath in, do your best to keep the elbows down as possible. Now there are variations of this where I would do reverse breathing structure, meaning that the reverse breathing structure would emphasize the ridge hand and the flip and of the elbow via a inflation of the tricep. That is my variation, not from Sifu Tong. So, the, and this is me adding William C.C. Chen's reverse breathing yang style to um, Sifu Tong's uh, Wu style. So this is an inhalation of flipping upward using the ridge hand area to put pressure on the opponent and to move them as I get their hand off me. I use this in tournaments, I've used this several times, especially the fixed step, fixed step push hands. This particular position often happens at the lower back, uh, but sometimes happens in the middle back where you flip the opponent, you connect the back of the hand like a handle and you flip them up and fling them out. You can find stuff, I'll actually link to that uh, in this video of um, some push hands drills you can do with that one. Inhaling up, exhale. Inhaling up, this is the reverse breathing version. Exhale. Inhaling up. Exhale. Inhaling up. Again, we've broken our, our Wu style principle by lifting the elbow and inflating the tricep, but we're still keeping the shoulder blade disappearing at the upper back. Now, I will say sometimes I'll even do inhalation and exhalation with the reverse breathing structure. Giving you lots of variations now. These concepts of connecting your body mechanics to the breath work and visualization, once you get to a certain level of proficiency, you can start to really freestyle and mix and match. But the concept, the foundational concepts remain the same. And I do recommend returning to your traditional breathing patterns. Um, more often than, than you do the freestyle. Because if you do too much freestyle, you, it's easy to lose those traditional foundations um, and then uh, you have to spend more time getting back to them. I think they're traditional for a reason. They're valuable because they've been time tested um, and we can always freestyle and do great things and, and evolve the system such as my added um, exercise here. But, uh, with a few minutes left, I want to do one more variation. And this final variation really takes us right back to the concept, going over all of these again, we did inhaling up, exhaling down. Leading the sheep along version one. 
Then we start staying seated. And then we start making it smooth and adding the hip. Then we start cutting on an angle sharper to the hips. And then we start going across the chest, keeping the elbow down. And then we reverse the breathing, inflating upward. So the hand has a slight upward motion, arms changing levels, reversing the breathing, reversing the attention, but still sliding the pressure off the chest and still emphasizing as much as you can the belly visualization. And now we're going to go even smaller. And this is the figure eight version. This figure eight version, it should feel as if you're drawing a figure eight. Notice that your hands go down one, one level and it still comes up. Each one goes down one level and it comes up. But now it's that much more precise. Shoulder, solar plexus, shoulder, sternum, solar plexus. So meaning one, two, three. That is your, for the smaller version, it's essentially in the middle to upper body rather than going down to the middle and lower body from the upper body. So here, I remain on the top hand. I'm getting one breath in and one breath out. If you've seen any praying mantis masters, especially the elders, you'll, uh, I, I've seen several in Chinatown that do forms, beautiful um, demonstrations of forms where they're doing a lot of this. And Wu style is the closest Tai Chi style to praying mantis Kung Fu. As a matter of fact, um, a, 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 I call him a buddy, Long Fei, if you, who just released his new video series. I just messaged him about it last week uh, with traditional Chinese Kung Fu and Tai Chi. Long Fei is a, um, and Google him if you don't know about him, but he is uh, from the lineage of seven star praying mantis uh, and Tai Chi. It's a praying mantis Tai Chi form, which I honestly did not know existed. I knew there was a connection, but I didn't know it existed. He's from that family. Uh, I, I saw a documentary on him years ago. I had a, the pleasure of meeting him and doing push hands with him uh, about two years ago in New York. And um, uh, my style of push hands is, is the sports style. It's very different from his, but he is, he is a great sport and a great guy. And I highly recommend checking out his video series. He's got a great ad campaign going on right now on Instagram. So check Long Fei out. So there we go. And I find this, this particular last one to be completely honest with you, I have to really get into a zone for this one because you really want to feel that figure eight. And not only do you want to feel the figure eight, once you feel the figure eight, you want to start allowing yourself to feel the, the, the great centrifugal force inside. So in other words, everything inside the shapes that you're drawing should feel like a whirlwind. It should feel tight. It should feel very, very tight, but not tight in the muscle. Tight because the circles are so short and sharp and intentional. And this is something that I often work on. When I do this exercise, it takes me several minutes to get into this zone. So, with this, with that said, really take, really take this this one with you, and know that it takes time to work on it. And I'll keep on coming back. You know, I, I, as I'm sharing these videos, let's, let's get out of the stance for a second. Inhaling up, up the heaven. As I'm sharing these videos, one of the great things about uh, recording yourself during martial arts, and I remember this from my father watching when he would watch his old VHS tapes from when I was a little kid, is the, uh, the ability to see your, track your own progress and to see the changes in your form um, over time. So I will consistently be sharing on this and I'm sure that I'll be able to give you a better demonstration of that final one um, as time goes on. <laughs> but today you get the details of it. All the other ones are, are, are good to go though. 
Inhaling up, feet two fists apart, parallel. Inhaling up, fingers to the back wall. Chest to the ceiling, hips forward, weight on the toes. Exhale, drop back, fingers forward. Drop the knees, inhaling up. Fingers to the back wall, chest to the ceiling, hips forward, weight on the toes. Exhale, butt back, fingers forward. Exhale, wash the color from the palm of the fingertips. Inhale, draw the color into the belly. We always shift the way we do these final stretches. Uh, we cycle through a few variations. We're going to inhale as if there's a big white light in the belly. And you're going to exhale, wash that light down the leg. Flexing the toe, pointing towards your nose. Inhaling up, switching legs. Exhaling down. Inhaling up, switching legs this time 45 degrees. Point the toe up, heel down, exhale. Drawing the color of white light to the belly. Exhale down. Inhaling up, turn to the left side, 90 degrees. Inhaling up to the right, 90 degrees. Inhaling up, exhale down the left leg. Inhale, drawing the light in through the soft part of the body, inside the arm and the leg. Turn to your right, exhale down. Inhaling up, turn to your left. Inhaling up over the body, exhaling down, down the back. Inhaling up, put one leg behind the other, one hand on the small of the back, other hand upward. The same hand that is, um, right now I have the same hand. This leg that's in front and hand uh, up and corresponding, exhaling, going down and touch the back leg. Toes of the back leg. Inhaling up, switching, exhale and shift. Inhale, reaching out of the hip, out of the shoulder. Big breath. Exhaling down, touch the toes of the back foot. Inhaling up. And switching. Now we have the corresponding hand up and the hand behind the foot. Exhaling down. You really want to stretch out at the knees and touch the back foot. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up again. Exhaling down. Touch the back foot. Inhaling big. Down. Slap up. Up the inside, turn, down the outside. Up the inside, turn, down the outside. Hold the shoulders, down the back. Inhaling up. Ocean of blood returns to the source. Yeah, just the fingertips. Fingertips down. This is one of the only times in the, the Wugong, uh, the Wusa, that you find just fingertips being activated. It also happens at the end of the yang set, a different routine. Put the hands together, chest, tap around. Always massage yourself at the end, massage the chest. Up and down the sternum. And go to the Kidneys, massaging the knuckles of the kidneys down all the way to the lower back, making circles and then bring those circles back up. And then reverse it. Down, 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 down. And up, up, up. And flip the fingers out, thumbs out. Palm on here. And switch. Up the face to the side. Up to the side, fingers to the scalp, front to back, back to front, front to back, back to front, massage, front to back, back to front, slapping, front to back, back to front, hollow fist, gentle banging, front to back, back to front, massaging. Front to back, back to front. 
you massage one side, make big circles, and really do your best to separate the skin and the muscle, like starting to move the skin in a different direction and reverse it. You might find some tightness. You really want to loosen it up. And exhale into the area while you do it. Reverse it again, and then reverse it again. And really feel it loosen up. Go to the other side. If you find tension on one side, massage, and then reverse the circles. And reverse it again, and reverse it again. Really want to get all that great circulation in the scalp. Massage around the, the forehead, top of the forehead, and massage, reverse it, temples, reverse it under the eyes, reverse it to the heart, and then top and bottom, switch, sides, underneath, underneath the gums, and then press and hold, and drill, one, two, three, tap, and circle bigger, Top and bottom, bump, and sides. Top and bottom, 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 and sides. Press and hold here between the index and thumb, right around that pressure point. Sure, just a little. And then massage. One, two, three, four. Five, drive the thumb up the natural line, the natural line on the arm. Keep going all the way up until you feel that pressure point right around here, the massage. Gets a little sensitive, that's when you go for it. And then you take the thumb, put it in the pocket of the elbow and take the index and middle, index and middle finger, go right around the outside and grip just under the forearm muscle. And you're not massaging here, you're massaging here. So using this grip as leverage, and you're going right into the pocket on the pressure point, the pocket of that elbow. And then you're going to drive the thumb down from the pocket of the elbow down the natural line. Going all the way to just above the pulse. You'll notice just above your pulse, it varies on everybody. You'll start to feel a sensitive point and you want to massage that sensitive point. And then one, two, three, four, five on the pulse, and then switch sides. Press and hold the palm. The thumb is directly in the center, and then drill. One, two, three, four, five. And then tap around. Each circle gets wider. Third circle is the widest, goes all the way up to the thumb area, top and bottom massaging on the fingers, and then the sides of the fingers. The massaging fingers go on the top and bottom and fall into the natural grooves of the receiving finger. And on the sides, the same thing. As you squeeze, let the finger, don't focus so much on the squeeze itself. Allow the squeeze to lock into a position on the finger. That's where you'll find the pressure points. Even in the massage, you want to have a Tai Chi mindset. So the squeeze is to find the grooves of the opponent's uh, natural curves. And then hold, just did a little reverse. Take your thumb and drive it up that natural line. And the forearm, get to that pressure point, massage. In the pocket between the pocket of the elbow and massage. Remember the fingers here are really just a leverage point so that I can get deep right here into the pressure point right here. And then I drive the thumb down the natural line to just above the pulse and the massage. You find that pressure point. And then one, two, three, massage. massage. One, two, three, and then grab one. Two. Close the eyes, inhale, wet light. Spread the whole body. Inhale, yeah, wet light up the front. Exhale, lower down the back. Inhale, up the left side. Exhale, down the right. Inhale, yeah, up the belly. Exhale, push the light down the legs into the ground. 
I'm gonna go into the ground, come back up and around like a fountain in reverse, making a big bubble around you. Throw light into the belly. Exhale, push into the top of the head. Like a fountain, surround your body, making a big bubble out. Even bigger, all the light coming out of the head, expanding the awareness. Feel the light inside of you, all around you, in your space. That gratitude for the body and the light. People in your life, the space itself. Thank you so much. As usual, this has been Tai Chi to the People. You can join Justice for Hire at justiceforhire.app. You can watch uh, me, Coach Jan Lucanis, on uh, to my Tai Chi channel on YouTube, Coach Jan's Tai Chi, Tai Chi Push Hands channel, uh, or go to janstaichi.com. And uh, you can donate to Meals for Unity, which helps feed. Uh, the elderly in hungry, that are hungry and it's a really, really wonderful organization and you can donate directly to them at Meals for Unity or at their website. Uh, that being said, I'm going to press stop. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. And like I said, if you'd like to join these Zoom sessions, you could do so every week. And this is on, on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So love you guys.